Uh, I was uh, in university administration for six or eight years, working on international education. Uh, I did one of the first, I did the first study uh, on uh, HIV AIDS, global HIV AIDS, as a U.S. national security issue. So there are other urgent public priorities out there which are calling for investment. But where's the money for all of that investment going to come from when we're already broke? Well, folks, I've got some good news for you. We're not broke. There are tens of billions of dollars of private sector capital that's pent up and waiting to be deployed to useful, productive purposes. Just uh, a week or two ago, I was hearing Jeffrey Immelt, the uh, CEO of GE, talking about how U.S. corporations are awash in cash. Now, uh, some of you may know, may remember, that, uh, that a couple of years ago, Immelt shook hands with Governor Dave uh, to invest in a state-of-the-art coal gasification test facility right there in Larrabee County. And uh, GE put in 50 million, and the state put in 50 million. That's the kind of investment that we need to invest in the future. The Transcontinental Railroad was built when Union Pacific and Central Pacific came together with the U.S. federal government to drive the Golden Spike at Promontory Summit in Utah. Really big things can happen when the public sector and the private sector get together to make joint investments and share priorities and make our tax dollars go further. And that's the kind of prosperity that we can invest in to increase our savings rate, to produce jobs, to produce growth, to produce innovation, to produce increased productivity and our international competitiveness. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the budget deficit uh, because we've got to get our federal budget deficit under control and we've got to put our financial house in order. I am a fiscal conservative. I've managed... I've managed institutional budgets all of my life. I've had to make some very tough decisions to let some people go. There's no question that we have to find a way, one way or another, to bring our revenues and our expenses into line with each other. And that's going to involve pulling in our belts. But, and, and exactly, our military expenditures. But um, that's not all there is to it. We have to make sure that our government is accountable and protects the interests of ordinary people. During this recent financial um, bubble, U.S. government agencies were asleep at the wheel while Wall Street went on a speculative binge. And look at the price we have all paid for that. Hundreds of billions of dollars of bailout funds of stimulus funds that all could have been avoided if government had been doing its job and paying attention in the first place. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, Representative Lummis convened a meeting in Cheyenne about the pine bark beetle uh, issue in our national forests. It was estimated at that time that just to clean up the roads and the campgrounds, in our national forests here in Wyoming and Colorado would cost $100 million. What's it going to cost next year? $200 million? What's it going to cost the year after that? $500 million? Let's get to the root of the problem, which is climate change. It's climate change which is causing the climate <laughs> Let's correct some of these structural imbalances which are distorting our budget priorities. Let's even the scales between the fat cats on Wall Street and in these corporate boardrooms and ordinary working people in Wyoming uh, who are footing the bill 
for their excesses. That's a kind of savings too. It's the savings that comes from government that responds proactively to impending threats and dangers, rather than sits on the, on the sidelines and, uh, and responds after the fact. And it's also the kind of government that Theodore Roosevelt, who was a Republican, called for, which, which is a government that promotes conservation and that stands up against the moneyed interests. So folks, let me come back to my um, vision of leadership for Wyoming. We can be the coal state that shows other coal states the way by backing legislation that can make cleaner coal a reality. We can be the anti-tax state that challenges the federal government to make our tax dollars go further by leveraging private sector resources in public and private sector partnerships. We can be the freedom-loving state that shifts the focus of freedom to reining in the people on Wall Street and in corporate boardrooms and to protect the freedoms of ordinary working people here in this state and across this nation of ours. We can be that change. Thank you for your support. I